Hi, this is Vintage Girl with a Bow. I am your host, Bibi, and my guest this evening is Minister Peter Cousins. Thank you, Lord God, for the host, Lord God, of this program that is about to do great things in this time and this season. We pray, dear God, that you'll continue to bless and increase and expand your daughter. And those, Lord God, that hear this program, Lord God, I pray, dear God, that there's something that will be said and done, Lord God, that will inspire or give one to reflect who you are and come to know you in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm Peter Cousins. Um, Boston Mass um, by way of Jamaica. My name is Road. So I currently in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm a member of Fountain of Grace Church um, in Canton, Mass. Um, the shepherd of the house is none other than um, our senior pastor is Pastor George Irabo in Gloria Irabo. Can you expound for me on your early years of Christianity, growing up in Jamaica. Did everything um, associated with church, participated in just about everything that um, happened at church, both Sunday church, um, midweek church, uh, <laughs> lived next door to the church actually. So, but those were fun times. I know what we did, we um, convention, rallies, um, those were super time, at least as young um, kids growing up. Uh, gave a lot of trouble at church um, during vacation Bible school time. There was a lot of um, antagonistic, even though it was church, there was a lot of antagonistic um, <laughs> uh, performance taking place at church. But at the same time, um, we knew the Bible um, and we were engrossed, or I, yeah, I'd say we, because it was a bunch of us, <laughs> young folks. Um, sometimes we'd be inside the sanctuary sitting down or sometimes we were outside doing other stuff um, or even looking through the window. Um, but those were the formative years that basically molded in terms of um, knowing Christ in terms of knowing about Christ. But as, as time passed and I've grown, um, we learned a lot. <laughs> and I would like for you to take me on an old journey. Remind me about how vibrant the youths were during that era. Some of the things that you guys did in church as youngsters. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that we had a lot of fun and I had, you know, a lot of um, things to look forward to because, like I said, in terms of the, the surrounding community, there was a lot of kids, um, a lot of grown folks, but it was a big church, um, a massive church back in the standard of um, back in the days, so to speak. Now we've got mega church, so I guess that could have been considered a mega church during those times based on the congregant um, and the activity. So, you know, um, Christmas season, every, every Christmas season, there was, um, you know, the, 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 the preparation for Christmas, um, the Christmas program, and that was massive, that was massive production. Um, and participating, um, learning, and, and, and participating in skits, basically. Um, you know, the youth um, Bible study, um, the youth, the youth ministry, like I said, there was a lot of young people at the church. So, um, even vacation Bible school, there was just so much activities. Uh, we had even the, you know, you had a, a, the, the big church and then you had a, we call it top church. So that was the first building as a church and migrating from that building. Um, to the bigger building, basically, we call it the top building. We spent a lot of time in the top building um, <laughs> doing various things. Um, back then, there was 
there was um, a magazine known by Herald of Folk, I think, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right now, where that was manufactured, so to speak, or um, it was like a distribution center, and you roll it up and you play with it, you do all sort of stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, but just, just getting prepared for um, the different ministries, um, that was great. That was um, where you were getting your feet wet, so to speak. Maybe um, not so much into saying um, preaching or anything of sort, you know, but just participate in spiritual activities, um, getting ready, getting um, your Bible verses down, um, digging in the Word, so to speak. It was fun time. Uh, and those were the formative years. Um, so I migrated to um, Boston, Massachusetts in 1980 so once i got to 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 um, boston massachusetts my mother was here and my brother they were already attending church of god of prophecy so from then basically i just um went came straight and came straight into church of god of prophecy <laughs> the positive influence that you've got around you that surrounds you also makes a difference in terms of how one basically um serve god or go into that particular pathway because you've got in you've got good influence and you've got good bad influence so if you've got you know if, if you're rubbing shoulder with good influence then more than likely um some of those things this is where even the discipleship comes in basically where you know <laughs> you're teaching you're guiding you're you're showing one how the pathway is supposed to be um followed basically so i think those are the different reasons why how I ended um, navigating my way back into the fold, so to speak. Thank you. So, right now, with your life presently as a Christian, are there any moments that you regret that you didn't start it back with the Lord along quicker than now? Yeah, you know, I, I want to make one correction um, also in terms of how I describe myself. Um, and I know you use the term Christian and I use the term Christian um, because that's the name but I view myself as a kingdom person because I'm more about the kingdom of God than about Christianity because Christianity is just the name and, and a religion and so everyone outside of a Muslim or a, a, a you know is a Christian so to speak um, so I'm more of a kingdom person i'm of the kingdom of god um so that's how I, i'd rather be associated with more than a christian so back to your um question um in regards to regrets you say right that was the question about regret yes. um so now that i'm up in age um <laughs> and i think uh, based on the fact that age is here um, it's a reality and you know now that you are you are on the, the side of the coin closer to going home than <laughs> staying young you can go at any time but I think you understand what I'm saying basically you know the, the, the scripture tells us we get three scores and ten basically and everything else is, is you know uh, brighter as far as I'm concerned basically um, but that it could run out at any point in time but because I think there's been a lot, a lot of waste, uh, uh, regrets. I wouldn't say regrets so much, um, but there's been a lot of wasted years based on what I know now. This covenant, so to speak, with, with, with Christ, basically, because it's a covenant that we've got with him, basically, um, that I've wasted a lot of time, basically, uh, because I feel the, 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 the years basically enjoying the things which, you know, which is our vanity. You know, Solomon talks about vanity, everything, everything aside from serving and worshiping God is vanity. And so realizing those things, um, that would be the only regret where I felt staying focused, serving God to the best and because we came for a purpose. And yes, sometimes we've got to find our way 
but knowing and you know not wisdom experience and knowledge basically goes a long way and so if i had to guide someone um it's it's best to serve in the days of your youth because when you get old what can you do you know um when time is running out not that it has run out yet but 20 years worth of doing the wrong thing when you only have 10 left you know based on one's life so to speak not necessarily minds but that's on that's that's the only area that I would look at it and say about regret. Aside from that, you know, you can't have regret space. You know, just should have done things differently. I hear you. Thank you for that answer. I want to ask you, uh, based on your strong um, friend um, community in the church while you were younger growing up, can you talk to me about your friendship? or the friends you have had along the way, are you still in touch with them? And how is it now? Um, if I go back to um, Jamaica days, yes, uh, with David Keen, um, that Church on the Rock and Sunshine, Sunshine Singers group, yes, they're still. Um, so yes, um, I'm an individual basically. Um, and I, I I do have um, contact with even Rosedale, some folks from Rosedale at this very stage. So, um, yeah, I, I'm a person who basically have friends um, from way back, yes. And you're still in contact with them? I mean, you're still... Yeah, you yeah still they're still... From time still to time. What is the best part of being, you know, a child of God. Um, the, opp the, the, the opportunity, basically, to to um, fellowship and have that intimacy um, and that intimate relationship. It's it's uh, there's no other feeling in terms of one's you you're in a zone with 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 with, with God with Christ, and you can feel you can feel him. You can. You can feel them running through you. You can feel them speaking to you, um, and just being in that meditative state. And and outside of the meditative state, and being in, in that intimate place, is when there's you, you, your joy is just bubbling up, and you're um, you're just praising. So I'm a, I, my my interaction. Um, I'm more of a worshiper. I like. And I know a lot of people talk, say they are worshippers, but you know, worshiping comes in different form. And worshiping doesn't just talk; it doesn't just deal with singing. Worshiping is not singing; that's just a praise. Um, but the worshiping, so the worshiping is basically um, your mind, your being is just centered. Um, you're tapping into to Christ, whether that hour, that day, um, or that time period or on a continuous base, you're tapped in. Yes, none of us are tapped in every single day that we, you know, we're spirit beings. So as long as we allow our spirit to be connected on a daily basis, where we're speaking, communing, um, and worshiping, even just worshiping, you might not be saying anything, but inside of you, inside of you, just worshiping, basically you feel, you feel that joy springing up inside. There's no other feeling. And then once that joy is, fair, you know, just springing up inside of you, and then you burst out and just say, hallelujah. And you say, hallelujah, 10 times, and you can't stop. There's no other feeling. Okay, so that's where you know that your personal communication with God or your, that personal relationship with him is in tune because, you know, he knows you by your name. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, and my, you know, you activate your spirit. So your spirit is activated and you're communing, you're communicating basically. And, you know, that, that, the energy of that communication. And have you ever really thought about it, what it would be like when you get over on the other side with Christ? 
If you're oh. enjoying him like this now on earth, can you imagine when that day come when you're going to see him face to face? Yep, because um, I try to imagine it because I, as, as recent as today, I kind of meditate into that zone. Like I said, even as recent as today, it's, 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 it's the worship in peace where because I love to worship, I get, I get joy and pleasure from worshiping. Um, you know, I, if I go to, to church, the, you know, if we, if we just worship for the whole night, I'm in my element. So, you know, the, what came to mind today, you know, in just one of the reflection or, or, or the meditation aspect of it, some, at some point today was just that worshiping experience. I, I, can't, I can't imagine what that feels like because even sometimes here, um, when, when, when you hear a good song and the words of that good song is so sweet and so, um, palatable to the to the soul and um like feeding you and you're saying wow this is so awesome and you hear such good singing can you just imagine just just the angels if the the angels are constantly singing and praising and worshiping i mean try to be old i mean a lot of times a lot of times you know we we want to be with christ um but we don't want to die, but we know we have to die to, to be with him, basically. So I, I'm, I'm cognizant of that fact. You know, so I realize, yes, at some point it's going to end. But then when it ends, then the joyful period begins. You know, not looking forward to end at this minute. But, you know, as long as what I said today also, and this is all to me alone, to myself, if it ends, I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm in the right place. What is the right place? I'm in tune with Christ. What, I, I'm being obedient because at the end of the day, um, being out of his will is what gets us in trouble. So for, if, if anything occur, basically, because um, I have that realization that, you know, <laughs> today, time is short. And so whenever it ends, just that it finds me in the right place. And truly, we can't wait for that um, gracious moment when we begin to, you know, enjoy him the way we want to. How often are, are new Christians guided by, you know, the saints that are already there who knows the way, you know, much longer than the other? How often do you see new Christians being guided? So I, I'd say um, right now it's rare from what I see. Um, you know, we just had a, a Zoom meeting um, a few minutes ago prior to this. Um, and the Zoom meeting is um, the, the small group, the connect group. So I'm one of the leaders. Um, we met with our senior pastors, um, three of us. Um, we lead the connect, the small connect group, basically for, the, for our church, um, and so we 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 resume a small group um, in two weeks, two to three weeks. We resume. We are on a break right now, um, so we had to meet with pastor basically and talk about the strategies and stuff like this. One of the things that comes up with the discipleship um, aspect, where the di discipleship basically is lacking. Um, but without that decision, without you discipling um, new converts, then, you know, it's hard for them to take root basically and to stay. And so we find that most churches, how does, you know, most churches right now, um, and I'm not in every church, but you can see the fruits basically, that discipleship is, is not a thing, is not current. Not, in, not across the landscape as it should, because Jesus Christ basically started out um, when he formed the church, basically, it was with small group, um, you know, in Acts, it was small group. And from that small group, even before the small group, Christ disciples, disciples. 